Come work. This week's episode of Spook House is sponsored by Lisa. Uh, they have a scary good offer that I'll tell you guys about later on in the episode. Um, but this week, uh, we are now in Thrilltober. Uh, it is upon us, you guys. So last week, we talked a little bit about horror movies, shared some horror movies with our mm-hmm. audience. Um, but this week, I wanted to drill down on the OG, the granddaddy of them all, uh, the vampire. My favorite monster, I think, undeniably the best monster Whoa. from monster Whoa. movies. I'm Whoa. sorry, what? Yeah. Excuse me? That's cool. See, they can't argue about it. Um, but yeah, so uh, we are going to talk about vampires this week. And uh, I have assembled a crew of the greatest vampire enthusiasts in this building, uh, worth two of the rooms in this building. Uh, I've got uh, James. Hotel Transylvania's James. <laughs> I've got Hotel Transylvania 2's Adam. Ivan to one. suck your dick. <laughs> and I got some Elise. I mean, they're on a cruise ship in the third one, right? <laughs> oh, I did boy. go to see the Aurora Borealis. Oh. Why? What's out there? Spooks? I don't know. It's a fucking thing with a mummy. All right? You really going to grill my ass over this? <laughs> I want to know. With the Aurora Borealis is tied to the mummy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. They said if Hotel Transylvania did good, they would make a new season of Samurai Jack. And then they did. The oh, yeah, end. It's the same guy. Yeah. His most successful thing is Hotel Transylvania. I would argue that the Clone Wars cartoon is pretty damn good. More successful than Hotel Transylvania? Absolutely not. Not Thank from a you. budgetary perspective. <laughs> uh, from a P&L, Thank you. Hotel Transylvania tops them all. <laughs> Critically, too. <laughs> So I'd actually forgotten about this movie. Dracula Dead and Loving It? it? Yeah. I, that makes <laughs> one of us. <laughs> you never forget about I, Dracula? No, absolutely not. I saw Dracula Dead and Loving It in theaters as a child, and I remember enjoying it, yeah. which who knows if it holds up well. It doesn't. Okay. Mm-hmm. but no. This was towards the end of Mel Brooks's life. Run. Leslie oh, Nielsen. He's just getting paychecks. Uh, uh, spoof films. When, so when did spoof films die? Scary movie. You think Scary so, Movie is no, the last Scary good Movie one? 2. Oh, well, yeah. Scary the Movie series. 2, technically. Okay. Because Scary Movie 2 has okay moments, mm-hmm. but then Scary Movie 3 is just outright terrible. And I mean, that was also those guys who then just buried it. Well, yeah, it was it, the. It, it, there's a spoof that we're actually going to cover in today's episode. <gasps> you got it. Excuse me? What we do in the shadows. But more of that later. Spoof. <laughs> that, definitely a, that is definitely a spoof on vampires. Absolutely. I don't think. I think it's a mockumentary true story. Uh, I think it's a mockumentary that, that spoofs the subject of vampires, yeah. Oh, well, you yeah. know. Hot debate. Uh, I, when, I, when I sent out the subject matter of this week's film house, Elise was actually the first one to jump on the list with about 50 vampire movies that she thinks yeah, is awesome. Probably just the most proactive. <laughs> yeah, well, you care. Um, but th- I guess that made me think that you are the biggest vampire fan we've got. So uh, you talk I don't, to us about some vampire movies? I don't think I am, no, you to don't. be honest. I think mm-hmm. James is. He was the one who said that vampires are the best monster. Well, yeah. they are. Yeah, you, no. seem to be, you seem to be pretty horny for yeah. vampire right Yeah, now. you seem to be the biggest vampire what, what's fan. A, what's a better movie monster than Man a vampire? Man thing? Mummy. Uh, Mummy. Swamp, swamp guy. <laughs> Zombies? Zombies. Uh, Russell, are I personally Crow, most Jekyll effectively and used. Uh, Hellraiser. These are Pinhead. all terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the other one with the teeth, the chatterer. <laughs> the one that's his name? CD's CD head. Maybe, Man. <laughs> maybe they're just like the most legendary, like the most iconic. I think when I think of Halloween and, and the kind of classic universal monsters, mm-hmm. the one that dominates that has his own name is Dracula. It's a vampire, what, huh? What came first? Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, or Bram Stoker's Dracula? Bram Stoker's Dracula, I believe. Is it true? Or I need okay. to look this up. Bram Stoker. Because wasn't know. Frankenstein. Frankenstein written in like... Oh. Like I thought they had like... A, didn't they all have a big powwow where they all like went to a castle and thought of spooky ideas and they, they basically went back and wrote them? Yeah, and, wrote they, them. Wrote them. and they all fucked. When was Frankenstein, 1818. 18. Mm. Ooh. And Bram yeah. Stoker. Oh, maybe it is Frankenstein then. Frankenstein yeah. wins. No, Even though I wouldn't... It is Frankenstein. Really Frankenstein, this, or, Frankenstein is a is a metaphor for the proletariat, so that makes yes, more sense that it fair. would be earlier. That's true. Dracula. There's, Dracula there is a metaphor for AIDS. How many Mel Brooks spoof movies are there about Frankenstein? One. One. Yeah, Young, Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh shit. 
<laughs> well, okay, well, I'll get I'll get things started. Um, <laughs> no, no. Talk, talk to us about this vampire movie that you love. You told me yesterday that you used to watch this over and over to make yourself feel good and warm and fuzzy. Not warm and funny. You know, just, sometimes you have movies that are comfort movies where like you'll put them on and just kind of to get it. Schindler's List, Irreversible, um, Requiem mm-hmm. for a Dream. That's All how uh, Thirst used to be for me. What is Thirst? I've never heard of Thirst. What is Thirst? So 2009 film from Park Chan-wook. You might know him from old boy fame. Mm-hmm. Um, Thirst is it's kind of a loose adaptation of a concept from this French novel, but it's about a priest who uh, in his charitable ways undergoes um, these experimental tests to see if he can help scientists develop a cure for this virus. Um, in doing so, he develops the virus, but discovers that upon receiving blood transfusions, it causes the virus to um, suppress, which gets him hooked on blood. I don't want to give too much away about this movie. It's actually like what I like about it the most is it's a really like manic and weird love story. Hmm. You say the, the end of this trailer, it starts to, it seems almost like it's a movie about the love story. Yeah, and d- visually it's such an impressive movie and it you might think like it looks pretty like bleak and the color palette is drab, but then there are some scenes like like here and toward the end of the movie where it's it's like beautiful. Well, um, I, the best thing about this movie in my opinion is that it has a very unconventional narrative. Yes. It's like act one and act two, mm-hmm. or prologue, act one, act two, epilogue, is like how the movie is set up. So like Elise was saying, that whole, the the Ooh. trailer kind of shows it, but it really sets up that the first half of the movie is just like this priest trying to do stuff. By the end of the first act, he's gotten into oh. a different entirely entire situation, and then the second act is like dealing with the fallout from everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. like, violent and gory and like obviously sexually charged but for me sometimes like once I watch something enough times that doesn't really like bother me about it like I don't notice it anymore Hmm. so this movie I've just seen so many times that like it's just a comfortable old friend Hmm. kind of thing so like the so the toe sucking or the well he's (laughs) he's a priest and a scientist no he's a priest but then um, Science priest. He helps scientists. He he offers to be kind of a guinea pig yeah. for them like, to help come up with a cure for this virus. Because he's like a priest, but he's like so totally devoted to like others. Yeah, right. In and a so mission, he's like missionary. He's like, oh, I'm like almost very he's much so like I'm willing to sacrifice way. myself yeah. for the greater good. So he's like, what can I do to help the most people? Oh, sacrifice my, myself to this science experiment. Mm-hmm. Because he didn't doesn't feel like his priestly duties are reaching yeah. enough people or changing enough lives. So like they pronounce him dead, you know, as they're doing that experiment. And then, but oh no, he's alive and he starts. He notices as he consumes these blood transfusions and he has a craving for it. Yeah. Um, he and he, and he he becomes kind of this like symbol uh, to people who are suffering from the d- disease and just the religious community because it's like oh wow he came back from the dead he he's he survived this disease so people start kind of you know, idolizing him. And then an old childhood friend of his sort of comes back and, and sees him, that dude that was sucking on her inner thigh. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh-huh. he sort of becomes infatuated with that dude's wife, the priest does. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I just feel like you should see it. It's it's like an Is it, awesome I'll, movie. I'll ask a question. Is it uh, worth multiple viewings? It must be. Like, is it one of those films where you feel like you get more out of it the more you watch it? Um, I would say that a movie, like if you're looking at like Park Chan Wook's movies, a movie like The Handmaiden would be more like, oh yeah, you should watch this multiple times because there are so many twists. Um, this isn't really like that, yeah. but I don't know. There's just something about it I really like. Is is there more than one scene of toe sucking, or is that? Like I think the, it's just the one. The climax just the of the one. film. Oh. God damn, the, get off the toe sucking. This director <laughs> though, disturbing. It, this director is really good about filming erotica but not making it feel like erotica. Yeah. The Handmaiden is the same way, like an extended scene with scissoring, but you're like, oh, I wonder what their emotional resonance is <laughs> yeah. in this moment. Like, oh, it's like it actually is good and this is the same thing. Obviously, they're showing you toe sucking and stuff, but it's not like it's not like people just go, hmm, maybe we should suck each other's toes. It's more like it makes sense in the continuity of the scene and the the mood of the scene. Yeah. Sure. And it that, just, you just look like a crazy person trying to explain it 
to people around you. Absolutely. Um, One does. Something <laughs> else I really like about this movie is how it takes place over like months, right? Yeah. Like the story takes place over months, but the movie itself almost appears to take place over one day. Hmm. So like towards the beginning, it's like daytime, like almost like dawn kind of like daytime scenes. And then it gets towards the middle of the movie. It's now almost entirely nighttime scenes. And then when it comes back around towards the the uh, beginning again, or towards the end, it's, it's now like, like kind of like dawn yeah. again, which is like a really, really cool, really fucking cool shit. Those are the kinds of things I think you pick up in multiple viewings. And gotcha. then also the uh, impending dread of it, because it is kind of like... Um, it's a hard R. Well, it's a hard R, but it's also a uh, gothic romance type... What, is, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Tragedy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, in a lot of ways, a beautiful tragedy. It's a dramatic tra- 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 tragedy. <laughs> but uh, an actor that plays the priest, uh, Song Kang-ho, he's like, and he's in a bunch of Park Chan-wook stuff, but he's also like Snowpiercer and The Host. Like, mm-hmm. I just really like him too. Oh, that's the main guy from The Host. Yeah, right? I, yeah I, I like I him so nice. much. He, he looks a like a less. real person, too. Like, yeah. he doesn't look too much like he's got, you know, the Hollywood good looks or How dare you. chiseled chin but or But women can't like resist that. him, either. Yeah. I would. Uh, sure. Just fight him off. He looks like <laughs> a normal States. dude. I, yes, he does. Yeah. The best thing about this director is that he used to be a movie critic. Mm-hmm. And they always say, you know, like, oh, it's easy to criticize, but can you do it? Yeah. But, er, like, almost all of his movies, with the exception of that one American one that he did, are, like, know, all sure. amazing. Mm-hmm. What was the American one he did? He it did. It's written stro- by the uh, guy who was in Prison Break. He's what? Stoker. Stoker. Uh, yeah, never heard of it. the The interesting thing about this too is that it's a kind of a loose adaptation of this French novel. But I don't think the French novel even has anything to do with vampires. Nice. <laughs> Just kind of like the love story and the sort of like general family dynamic plot. Mm-hmm. Like this is a story about like human relationships as much as it is about like supernatural mm-hmm. occurrences, whatever. But the, I think the book, he just lifted kind of that, that story and yeah. then applied it to vampires, which that's is really I, neat. That's what's so cool about it though. Yeah. Cause it was like, what if like, what if you were like Greg Gatsby with vampires? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I think that's a cool thing as yeah. opposed to Pride of Prejudice and Zombies, which is like literally Lazy. ham-fisted, right? Yeah, yeah. This, Find and replace. This is, like I, I get, I haven't read the French novel, but I assume if you watch this movie, you're like, oh, well, if the French novel doesn't have vampires, it's totally easy to imagine how he's like, well, I'm going to add this whole beginning that sets up vampires, and then imagine if vampires were in this French novel. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it'd still be as compelling, maybe even more so. Did Did you read this book, Elise? No, I, okay. I haven't. You're not that hard. Mm. Thirst. No, no, no. I also want to give a shout out to Netflix Castlevania series. Warren Ellis. Oh yeah, that you, it's not a movie, but it's really it's good. good. That comes out soon, right? Yeah, the, the second, yeah. second part. First, I think we should we should talk about that on the show. It is a gorgeous anime. It's so good. Written um, by a genius too, Warren Ellis, mostly known for comics. He's written a few books, but that dude is brilliant. Yeah, it's also so cool. it's sort of a love letter to the video games in mm-hmm. a kind of a, a weird way. Like the people making the anime are producing it seem to love the game more than the people who made the game. <laughs> or they're like, oh, man, the story's going to line up. And the guys making the game are like, well, Konami's like, whatever, fuck it. Like, sure, man. We'll license <laughs> well, it out. I, f- I feel like there was maybe the third episode of that. They actually had platforming for a few minutes where he's kind of like running through the castle. Yeah, and It was like one of the best, I guess, taking platforming from a game and making that into a narrative of some kind. Dun, dun, I don't know. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, uh, really wonderful dun, dun. scene. Hey, quit a quick, quick uh, hot take for you. Did you know Alucard is Dracula backwards? I don't want to know. <laughs> I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, Adam. Hi. Uh, when you think of vampires, what, what movie pops in your head? Oh, I just think of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Suck me dry. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, I think of a lot of movies, Dan, but I like What movie th- did you want to talk about? The today? very first one I saw as a kid, the very first vampire movie I ever saw was Fright Night from 1985. The superior Fright Night. How uh, dare you? IMO. I, I have... Here's I the think thing. it is. I have mixed opinions on both films. I have seen both. I, I enjoyed the remake, but... Uh, as a kid, the ver- I saw two vampire films growing up. I believe it was this one and Once Bitten. Mm, <laughs> wow, you don't know what vampires and, are. <laughs> and as, a, uh, as a kid, um, Fright Night scared me more than it should have. Uh, watching it again as an adult, I realized that it is actually a lot funnier than I remember, I recall. Uh, yeah. But 
it is uh, a thing that I love about it is like it is so quintessential 80s. Uh, there's like a really cool uh, kind of iconic nightclub scene that like I was just rewatching it before we did this. And it's just like it is pure 80s. The The plot is about a young kid who moves in ne- or uh, has a neighbor moving next door. And he's like, he's a vampire. No one will believe me. And it's just like that. It's such a traditional tropey sort of thing. But it's somewhat self-aware, which is weird. Um, and then all the special effects are practical, which yeah. is great. I love it. Um, and then the weird thing about this movie is it even has a narrative switch where it starts out about the young boy next door who really isn't that young. He's probably played like a 26-year-old. <laughs> uh, but he seeks the help of a host of a, a late-night show called Fright Night yeah. who plays a, like a vampire hunter, which makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you go to him? He's like, I'm an actor. Why would you do that? But then it story sort of becomes that guy's story about him now hunting a vampire and becoming the man he was meant to be. Uh, and it's just it, – it's there's nothing really unique, I think, about it. I think it's just – it's so pure. There's something about the this product that came about at the time it did with the circumstances and people and vibe it did that, to me, like, the, the 2011 one is, like, it's good. It's fine. Yeah. But but I just don't think it's it has what this has. This, no, this it's, something it's this missing has. the heart. Yeah. I, I'll give it that. I'm, well, I'm, and the nostalgia. Well, I'm going to go out and say that I love the 2011 I know you one. do. Yeah. Because it has something that I feel like this early one, for as much of its is its cheese ball, like and nostalgia, hmm. the the new one has performance. Sure, Colin Farrell is awesome. He is. as Vampire Next Door. He's so like He's I knew charismatic. the plot. I knew the plot of the movie, and I was watching it, going like, "Is he like?" But maybe this is just a mix-up. Like, and I knew <laughs> what it was because he's so fucking good in this. And then David Tennant plays the Fright like Night the, host. Yeah, who's sort of like a uh, Chris, what's his face? Uh, uh, mind Freak. Mind Freak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, like, it's w- probably the first time I saw him something, like, as something outside of, like, Doctor Who. And he's really funny because it, it, it takes those things that are all good ideas from the first Friday Night, but I think it makes them, it punctuates them a little bit better. So, mm-hmm. like, he's worried about his ratings and he sees how this could be like an opportunity for him. But then once he gets into it, he like feels like he has to follow through on it. Yeah. And then also again, Colin Farrell's so like sexy, hot, like it felt more like Disturbia or yeah. um, Rear Window or something in a lot of ways, which mm-hmm. I liked where it was like the back and forth. Maybe it's just, maybe this is a misunderstanding. Maybe this is just a kid who's like completely jealous of the guy next door, but then like, once it's all revealed, you're like, oh, fucking shit. Well, it's got Tony Collette in it, too. Tony Collette. She great. Won. Late great Anton Yelton. Yeah. Yeah. I, here's the thing. I have, there are very few problems I have with the Fright Night remake, except for they try to kind of shove in some things that are like, they try to give a reason for one of the characters being mad at vampires. Uh, he's basically like, vampires killed my parents. Or I, like, don't, I don't remember And then I think it's even revealed that it was... Colin Farrell's character that killed uh, Christopher Mintz Plotz's parents or something like that. It just it felt really awkward and seems sort of, forced. A very forced. I've been to that store. Um, what store is that? It's in Burbank. It's oh, but the movie of, takes no, it's place in, in Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> Dan. Um, sure. There, there are parts that I did like about it. I do like when people try to make sense of vampires in our current day. So, uh, what was the one? Thirty Days a Night. Or they're like, oh, what if, you know, in Alaska where it's nighttime for a month? Oh, that'd be a perfect place for vampires. Yeah. I know it was a comic book, but either way, interesting question. So then Vegas is actually, they, they point out, is a kind of a cool, uh, smart place for vampires to go. You think, but it's sunny all the time. It's like, yeah, but people work at night. It's a 24-hour mm-hmm. And so city. people put up blackout curtains. So, like, one of the things they bring up that movie, like, he's got blackout curtains. Isn't that weird? Like, no, lots of people have it. Also, yeah. they're at the end of the movie. Right and you can walk the through the hotel. One, co- one hotel connects to the other. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, there's other – in both movies, I love they have the moments of, uh, you know, that I love the uh, – Asking the vampire to be invited in. Yeah, those are pretty. There's like a pretty drawn out moment, and for, forget which one. I think the remake. They do like a drawn out, like I don't know, because he's Colin Farrell's basically the sexy neighbor who's trying to fuck your mom uh, that we all had growing up, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Hmm? No. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about, audience. <laughs> Uh, one out of five people <laughs> typically uh, have to deal with that. So. Oh, I thought you were going to say you tried to bang your mom. <laughs> no, no, it's a different movie. Uh, but I just, I I am also unapologetically a Colin Farrell fan. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I uh, like him too. I don't think he gets enough credit 
uh, if you haven't seen movies like In Bruges. The Lobster. Uh, what is it? The, the, what is it? The, the new one? The Death Daredevil. 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 He's actually pretty damn good he's at Daredevil. He's the movie. redeeming <laughs> part of Daredevil. Yeah. Um, but he's uh, even, fuck it, SWAT. I thought he was good in SWAT. No. He's yeah. got a lot of charisma. He, he's red. Yeah. Dan, Dan and I talked about this a little bit in the morning, um, but uh, Colin Farrell has had a career trajectory of his uh, perfect for him, which is that he kind of burst onto the scene as this hunky, like, dude. With a who, brogue. Who was kind of put in hunky roles, but then became, like, this leading man in not the right way, like the way Tom Cruise is a leading man. Cellular. Is, yeah, like, Oof. it's not exactly the best for Colin Farrell, but then after that, he started getting older, and he stopped getting those roles, and they started getting supporting roles, which are way better for him mm-hmm. to, show, like, show how good he is and stuff. Uh, I just this is the the reason this movie stood out to me when you mentioned it was that it could they could have just phoned it all in mm-hmm. and they didn't they got talent it shot really well like it feel like the person cared about the source material they weren't just buying a title you know or yeah. buying a known property or something who directed this uh, I forget the guy's name Isn't but he he directed uh, I Tanya oh okay. Yeah. Oh, okay yeah he he's directed some films uh, older guy I believe but. Um, he's done actually some good films. It was just uh, Craig and I, Gillespie. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done a, a handful. Of Lars movies. and the Real oh, Girl. Okay. Yeah. What was the other one? Ooh, yeah, a million Star dollar Wars. arm. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of all over the place. But either way, uh, I feel like if you're looking for kind of more of a fun kind of horror vampire esque weekend, Fright Night, definitely the original. And if mm. you're filling up to it, the remake ain't half bad. Uh, well, I mean, there, James loves it. But. There's a sequel from the 80s as well that's apparently Both trash. these movies got Fright sequels. And this one, yeah. Uh, no, Fright... <laughs> God, there is a 1988 Fright Night 2, which the main character tries to reverse justify why his neighbor was a vampire and thinks he's... He tries to basically tell himself he was just a serial killer. It, it's almost the exact same story, but then you, like, move somewhere else and there's now four vampires. It's stupid. It failed at the box office. And then they made, like, a directed dvd sequel of this movie oh, I that I just found out about. Did not know that. Yeah. Who's it's, in it's, it? They just redo the same thing from the original Friday. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive it takes place in Romania, which we learned over the weekend. Uh, if you're trying to make a sequel for cheap, that's Go where you do it. Romania. A la Spirit yeah. of Vengeance. Yeah. yeah. Which wasn't Well, um, wasn't isn't The Nun set in Romania? Mm. Never, yeah. I don't I know reached. where it's shot, but it's definitely set in Romania. Well, it's like, a, what was the film? Hostel? Yeah. Right, it's like Eli Ross, like, I want to make a movie for $45. Like, <laughs> we got a place for you. And Eli, they- what's in your pocket? <laughs> got a few mints. Yeah. So it's the it's always a bad sign when the sequel takes place in the far east of Europe because mm-hmm. that means their budget is probably abysmal. Uh, but yeah, there. I once again just found out there is a sequel to the 2011 remake of Fright Night and it looks and sounds terrible. And we're sitting here like, Dopes. Yeah. Not watching it. Ta- talking about everything but. Yeah. <laughs> Such losers. All right. Um, do a little ad read here. When you shit the bed from the spooks this Halloween season, toss that I sucker will. in the trash. Grab yourself some internet and check out Lisa. Uh, do you find yourself distracted, forgetting things, making mistakes at work? A quality night's sleep makes all the difference. The right mattress is the difference between resting and just laying down. The Lisa mattress is the product of more than 30 years of experience in mattress engineering and hundreds of hours of testing. Comprised of three foam layers that provide cooling, pressure relief, body contouring, and support, over 300,000 happy Lisa sleepers agree the Lisa mattress gives them the rest they need. Order your Lisa mattress online at lisa.com slash filmhouse with promo code filmhouse and try it risk-free for 100 nights. It ships directly to your door in a convenient box with free shipping and free returns. You cannot go wrong. Find the right mattress for you at lisa.com slash filmhouse and get the rest you need tonight. Get up to $160 off the Lisa mattress or $235 off the luxury Sapira mattress. And free shipping on the Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash filmhouse and enter the promo code filmhouse at checkout. That's L E E S A dot com slash F I L M H A U S. Use the promo code Filmhouse. Thank you, Lisa, for sponsoring this episode of Spook House. And um, uh, do coffins? Pardon? Oh, sorry. I was going to ask. Do coffins have like little mattresses inside of them? Yeah, of course. Good ones. You got to yeah. be comfy in your Good coffin. Ones have a Lisa inside. <laughs> so. Um, 
before we get to uh, James' best vampire movie, however we're doing this, um, I wanted to talk about Dracula for a minute because he is, you know, the name brand of vampires, but kind of <laughs> sucks. Like, I, I watched Bram Stoker's Dracula again recently, and that movie, despite being made by Francis Ford Coppola, who's like one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, kind of boring and slow. I mean, um, it's true to the novel. Yeah, and m- maybe that's the maybe the source material isn't that exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is an audible, uh, or sorry, pardon me, it's not audible, but there's an audiobook version narrated or with Tim Curry. Oh, I, I'll just throw is that, that out there. Defi- entire, that's your entire, <laughs> your, your honor, honor I my closing my arguments. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just I was gonna throw it out there and see why you guys or what you thought of Dracula in. Maybe his movies don't suck. I mean, Maybe they do. I, I mean, I'm trying to think of an iteration of him that hasn't been done to death that I find interesting. Blade other three. than, yeah, Euro Trash. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, the guy first from I'm going to kill Blade, yeah. then I'm going to party all night. <laughs> oh, too many buttons on the show. Yeah. Take it down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than Dracula Untold, the epitome of Dracula films. I don't know. I mean, I, well, I, I do like Dracula I mean, actually in the uh, Castlevania series. Yeah. It's pretty I badass. It's, he, and he's got a pretty good reason for being a dick. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. because, I mean, I think it comes from the fact that the the f- original source material of Dracula isn't isn't our modern take on horror. No, it's told, take, it's told in the past tense through, like, journals and yeah. articles. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's also so this long, drawn-out thing. It, it, like, deals with the question of immortality and what that mm-hmm. would be turn a man into and power and th- like it's it's thematically about more things it wasn't until i don't know what a hundred years ago that we turned vampires into creeps that suck blood yeah. and like our murder it with all murderous started with intent. vlad the impaler right yeah it started with vlad the, who's who's actually pretty scary yeah <laughs> um, actually scarier than a vampire yeah remember yeah. when he was like oh there are a bunch of people who are complaining about food mm-hmm. so he he was like, I will build, build you a mess hall. So he built them a thing in town to feed all of them and then threw a big banquet. And then when they all went in, all the po- uh, poor hungry people went inside, he locked the doors, burned it to the ground and said, there, now no one is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> call uh, me Dracula. The problem. And then he went, call me Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think part of it is that if you're going to do Dracula, it's hard to do Dracula without at least acknowledging where his mythology comes from. And his mythology isn't, very scary in a lot of ways. Well, in in the original story, also like he's kind of like bumbling and goofy, kind of when mm-hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. When they go to the castle, and he's like trying to figure out how to like make food and set a table and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, now stuff like that, like a vampire popping up to ninety degrees, from, like <laughs> yeah. that's that we look at that now, and it's goofy because it's been. It's been spoofed. It's, too you know, many it's been times. spoofed too many times. So like, yeah, Leslie Nielsen hitting his head. Like we, <laughs> the, the, the sort of stuff we've moved beyond. I, uh, Gary Oldman is awesome in this is. movie, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Especially I, his old lady-like with Dracula. The butt, with the butt hair. Yeah. I that think, is awesome. Man, I used to have really strange dreams about the girl, the, the three women who oh. take Keanu and then have sex with him and then drain his blood and then have sex with him again. And like, then I was so, You guys were like playing checkers. I saw this movie when I was really young and I was so confused. <laughs> Me too. Because I was terrified. I used to, I watched this movie and then for like weeks I would sleep with a blanket around my neck. <laughs> Not the women. But, but I also would get boners. <laughs> <laughs> From tying something so, tightly like, around your neck. It really, like it really, I was like, Yeah, so like man, blank dude. around the neck, blank around the dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just want to cut off all the blood. No, I also love this. I think I saw this movie too soon or too young because I, I was very it, young. But it did, It especially those women scared the shit out of me. In the Sega me. CD game. Um, <laughs> this is also, Sega this, Boy. Uh, uh, the... 90s version of Dracula is actually one that I've never seen. Uh, this one? I, it's been spoofed so many times, and I've seen bits of it on like TV here and there that I feel like I have seen it. The mm. Simpsons, yeah, Easter Burns. Yeah, it's one those. of those movies that I think has been ruined for me because, yeah, I remember being scared by the poster <laughs> as a kid. It was just the... It was like a gargoyle statue with blood coming out of the yeah. mouth. And I remember being, ah! Well, as a Simpson, mm-hmm. uh, as a Simpson, as a kid, I found that Treehouse of Horror creepy with Mr. Burns as, mm-hmm. like, the vampire. Yeah. It, it is spoofed. You should watch it, though. Like, it's, it's, it's dated yeah. in a lot of ways, but it's still kind of got, like, a godfathery vibe where 
like no one saw the Godfather before Godfather was referenced and completely like you knew every single line and scene from Godfather. Yeah. But when you see it all together, it's like actually pretty cool how I mean, it's made. There is great stuff in it. Like he I feel like Coppola was homaging movies I'm not even familiar with, but a lot of like, like the Nosferatu. old shadow play. Yeah. Like there were little spooks and like kind of old style homages it seemed like he was going for yeah, like, which mm-hmm. might have slowed it down and made it like seem like paying pre-homage to Queen of the Damned <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of I don't know how he did it but I this have th- seen Interview with the Vampire though this yeah, that is, is my great. favorite gay porno where yeah. he like cuts himself shaving yeah. and like licks the little bit of the blood that for you yeah. it's so creepy <laughs> drinks. yeah but no. yeah then there's special effects and then like, that chick bangs a do you remember her friend oh, the werewolf her the friend werewolf. bangs a person until she, she pops eventually. God, so f- fucking horny. Looks like the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the other thing, I guess. I think I want to say I've seen I saw Dracula dead and loving it at a young age too. But And then also once bitten, vampires just always oh, sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of it, right? Yeah. This, this, they, they seduce, right? Because the blood tastes sweeter when, it's, when it is offered willingly. So yeah, It's always just... Heaving bosoms. Yeah, yeah. everything's well, heaving, <laughs> heaving. And a lot of Dracula uh, stories are Dracula trying to get his lost love back. Mm-hmm. However, it is that he lost her. She's yeah. reborn in modern times. Left at a mall. He want, you know, I think he instead of just conquering her, her and station. taking her, he he gets more out of letting her love him back. Because again, it's about him being so alone. Well, he's a, he has the gift I mean, that everyone dreams yeah. of, of never having to die, mm-hmm. except it's a curse because he has to do it alone. Oh, that's, that's, that's me. I mean, that comes into play in Thirst as well. It does, yeah. Um, but, like Adam, you said, like, in Castlevania, Dracula's origin in that, like, it's, it that makes a, that character all the more better. Yeah, when you I thought see. That, was, that was a bit better where this woman shows up and she's like, you ain't so bad. He's yeah. like, I'm not so bad. <laughs> yeah. And then the town goes, kill her. Yeah, and he's like, oh, but I'm a friendly vampire. Yeah. And then he's like, wait, you killed her? Fuck you. Yeah, fuck and, he's you like, all. and he's like, a curse on your land for a thousand. You're like, like do your best, Dracula. Oh, crap. He's doing it. <laughs> 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 um, he's, he's terrible. He's got powers. Yeah. I'll say this, though. I think Dracula kind of has is dealing with that phase that pirates dealt with for a really long time. I think some actor... And writer has to come along and figure out a new take on it, kind of like Johnny Depp did with Jack Sparrow. Because sure. everyone is still kind of doing vampires as portrayed by Boris Karloff, right? Like yeah. German expressions. Well, wait, that was Frankenstein. You're thinking. Oh, sorry. Of, uh, um, the other one, the one from Ed Wood. Oh, Bella. Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi sorry. Yeah. Um, and so everyone's basically been doing that version of Dracula for. Again, like does that just speak to years. how iconic it well, was? Well, no, though. because that's the same thing that happened with pirates. Is that the dude Shit. from Treasure Island came in and he basically pirates were never Yarmady, and still he mm. started doing Yarmady, and then everyone's like, "Oh, that's pirates." They need so some, you, there is room. You for think like to Irish out. Dracula or what? <laughs> I think Colin Farrell as a sexy Dracula that moves in next door is probably the ideal situation. I, I think Euro Trash. Blade Trinity it's vampire, uh, big big uh, beefcake from yeah. Prison Break. Or that's that's my Dracula. What about like Hollywood movie mogul Dracula, mm. Harvey Weinstein style? Oh, that makes more sense. Let me remind you that <laughs> the stat the vampire did survive into the modern age when he drank the blood of Christian Slater <laughs> at the end of Interview with the Vampire. Except he's still wearing clothes from the 18th century. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> that was the best part. He's like, I was hiding until the story was told. Well, I, was I, like, I do, I do love. So at the, it, I do love it? Interview with the Vampire. For the record, it's the best I love yeah, that movie. It's a good movie. I own it on VHS, DVD. And laser disc. Maybe laser disc. Yeah. Um, but my one of my favorite parts is when Louis goes to see Lestat after all those years in modern New Orleans, mm-hmm. and uh, and then he goes to the old house and he's just Tom Cruise just sitting there all yeah. withered away. Mm-hmm. And then at one point a helicopter goes by and he's like, ah! And I'm like, <laughs> this, is, this is the only helicopter that's ever gone by. <laughs> like, like, what are you doing in here? Uh, so uh. that that's the character that went on to be in Queen of the Damned, right? Lestat, yeah. yeah. Lestat is uh, Anne Flame. Rice's yeah. uh, fuck toy. Sexy. Gotcha. She just wants to bang him so hard. Played by a young Stuart Townsend who went on to not play Aragon in Lord of the Rings. Fun <laughs> fact, I had a dog growing up and his name was Lestat. I named him. Oh, yeah. And that I was dog supposed was to have, Supposed to have two dogs and I was going to name them Louie and Lestat, but I didn't. Lestat because was I'm not very a lazy. Man. What? He's very lazy. 
Lestat well, he is seemed very possessed protective. by some he sort of very, evil. He had, he had his shtick, which was, I'm going to lie around and don't get in my <laughs> way, I'll everyone. growl at you. Mostly strangers <laughs> like Dan who come around. There's, yeah. some, yeah. there's some wonderful, lovely and terrible acting in Interview with the Vampire, mostly from Tom Cruise. There's a good moment when he's like, I won't drink this blood. And it's like, what are yeah. you doing? He's like, I love women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom. <laughs> women, girls are nice. And they're like, okay, so you need to... You need to suck the neck of Brad Pace. You got it. <laughs> I'm in there. Mm. Nice, um, Jamesy. Yeah. What uh, what movie did you want to well, talk about? Well, Al- Elise mentioned it earlier, featured. so it's no surprise coming from me that my movie <sighs> is Monster Squad. <laughs> God damn it. With the remake or <laughs> the original? The- I'm just kidding. There was a cartoon, right? No, was there? No. I assume Monster there Squad. would be. That no. seems like something they're, they're Untapped. That. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the remake of Monster Squad. That's good. Um, no, I'm going to go What We Do in the Shadows. Good movie. This was fun. Um, because if we're covering all the bases, Korean vampires, 80s vampires, and New uh, art, art vampires, oh. I want to go New Zealand comedy <laughs> vampires. <laughs> um, this movie, Logical it came progression. out a couple years ago. It's directed by Taika Waititi, written by Taika and Jermaine Clement off of a short that they had done a few years prior. Basically, it's a mockumentary about a bunch of vampires that live in a house in Wellington. I believe so. Right? Auckland? Mm -hmm. Um, New Zealand. And uh, it's genuinely hilarious. It's maybe one of the best mockumentary movies ever made. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The stills Um, are so good. It has has one of the best things that a mockumentary can, which is... Uh, it feels like a documentary which is informing you about the subject matter of like the world so you learn about vampires and you learn about like their vampire culture and what makes what makes their lives the way they are like a good documentary but it also has kind of a through narrative which is them dealing with their personal issues all these people living in a house together and they each have like an individual storyline and what happens when a new vampire is brought into the fold so there's like they're very old they're hundreds of years old some of them even more than that and then they bring in this new guy who's just like a regular modern New Zealand dude in his 20s mm-hmm. and how that throws off the house dynamic of everything um, they also have like a Nosferatu pita, pita. sweet pita. 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 pita I love have pita. to do the dishes yeah. Peter's pita. my favorite <laughs> sweet pita yeah. he's barely in the movie though. this ancient vampire that lives in the he's, basement he's in the movie more than they had originally intended because it costs so much to put him in that makeup <laughs> oh, really? but this movie is like so much Im- so much improv too because yeah. like I was reading that they they recorded like over a hundred hours worth of footage mm-hmm. and this somehow had to boil Jesus that down into Christ. 90 minutes or two hours or whatever. Well, they even they introduce a character later in the movie, which I, I had read up was it was never intended for him. Yeah. To, it's like, isn't he like a camera? Or he's like a friend of the new guy. Oh, Stu? I think Stu, yeah. He he's was not an actor. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't intended yeah. to be in the movie as much as he was. <laughs> and they so didn't the let him learn guy. any of his lines. They wanted <laughs> yeah. him to seem like a deer in headlights, <laughs> yeah. so they wouldn't show yeah. him any of the script, and then they just make, say I this. I don't think they, they showed like, anybody any of the script. <laughs> yeah. like, there Stu, might not have been Stu one. becomes this whole, like, the emotional... He's like this. He's like a film. piece of wood. He's like this yeah. completely boring person, but they all love Stu. Yeah, and he's like their new best friend or whatever. But he's human, so they're like nobody bites Stu. Yeah, it, the Beast is one of my favorite things. Yeah. The Beast, the ba- they, battle the Beast. They obviously come with a lot of baggage because they're so old, and yeah. it's fun watching them sort through that baggage and then also try and live in a modern world. Part of the the thing is the inciting incident is when a new younger vampire comes in. They they can't just hide like like Lestat from helicopters mm-hmm. anymore. They have to kind of find a way to better integrate with the modern world, and that's that's what most of the movie is about. Yeah. Um, but but it's, it's it's incredible. It just I takes mean, the weight out of the vampire. And it, it does really, like, hit all the, like, Taika Waititi's character, his relationship with that woman who's mm-hmm. now since aged, but yeah, he yeah. still, like, loves her. It's, it's kind of it's sweet. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of hit all these different vampire tropes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in so many different ways. Like, like he's kind of like the sexy, like he's, I think he calls himself Vlad the Poker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that, he's supposed to be the sexy there's vampire. There's a super throwaway line where they're using Facebook. I usually hate these kind of jokes, but they're like, yeah, you could like message her, friend her, poke her. And he, he just gives him a look. Yeah. And it's like, it's such a throwaway thing, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It It's funnier. It's, if you like the Flight of the Concords guys, then I think it's, it's a movie Which, that's, 
Actually, gonna, it'll be up your, your alley. Speaking of, there's a Flight of the Concord special this Sunday. Yeah. HBO, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, Did so you watch this it? it hasn't come out yet. No. This this it's movie's great. It de- it also showcases a, a bigger supernatural world out there, which they've talked about spinning off into, which oh, is really swear nice. wolves. Yeah, yeah. We are, these we are wolves. Yeah. James and I watched some of Wellington Paranormal. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's fun. Yeah. Like monster of the week stuff. Yeah. All right. But this this movie is hilarious and great, and it's <laughs> one of the best mockumentaries I I can think of. It, the, I love the, the beast. Well, the the one part I really like <laughs> they talk about they showed it earlier in this trailer, but uh, when they're talking about how they can't they can't use mirrors, so they have to draw each other of what they look like. When <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah. Some shitty little child drawing. Yeah. Well, yeah. You see, they show a plot shot, but they have like a coat hanger with all of the clothes, <laughs> and they're like, this is what you would look like walking around dressed like this. Yeah, I love when they're traipsing around yeah, they in their clothes trying to get into clubs, see, and they have to oh, so they spun off those in. cops? They, yeah. they, the club. uh, they have to get invited into the clubs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, they keep asking, can we come in? They're like, no, man. Yeah. Not with those clothes. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I, it just hits every single trope in such a funny way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it was a good, it's a good way of modernizing vampires, but then kind of also poking it at fun how a modern vampire wouldn't really work. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all the logistical stuff too, like with the werewolves, like their clothes are gonna tear off, uh-huh. so they all have to have like replacement jeans hidden yeah, <laughs> yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Spandex. It's great. Anyway, go watch it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, go watch all these movies, actually. Also Monster too. Squad, because <laughs> it's got all the monsters in it. Wolf man's got hurts. Yep, that's the- Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Are you kidding me, really? It is. Go watch Napoleon Dynamite again. Um, oh. so there's another vampire movie I'd like to talk about because uh, uh, the Bram Stoker's Dracula was a movie I was into when I was like a child. Mm-hmm. But the next movie that kind of blew me away when I was in college, when I was getting into filmmaking, was Shadow of the Vampire. Mm-hmm. This is about so uh, good. F.W. Yeah. Murnau making – it's like a metafictional take on him making Nosferatu because mm-hmm. whoever – the family of Bram Stoker wouldn't sell him the rights to Dracula. So he's like, I'm just going to make Nosferatu. Um, but it's kind of a, it's a movie about making movies. So there's a lot of in jokes about making movies. But then Willem Dafoe plays Count Orlock, and he's just like mesmerizing. He, he plays like an animal, essentially. Well, because they well, find the, this oh dude who like – well, He's yeah, basically a vampire. Secret. They cast him yeah. in secret, so they didn't yeah. let, let on where they found him yeah. from, but they found him in a hole in a castle. But, the yeah, the premise <laughs> is that he is a vampire. Yeah. They well, went to make a movie about a vampire, so they basically <laughs> they found they one. But the actor, the rest of the crew and actors don't know that he's a vampire. Well, they said he was, some trouble. Yeah, they said he was using like the Eisenstein method acting, mm-hmm. so he would only show up in makeup and would always act like yeah. he was playing Count Orlock. This was my first experience where I was like be, really truly became aware of Willem Dafoe when he's, I saw this. He's so fucking good in this. It's mm-hmm. great. He's just got little ticks, little things. Like he clicks his fingernails together and it's he, terrifying. He's super creepy. So um, is uh, John Malkovich. Well, yeah, he he also plays a monster in a way. Yeah. It's like he's manipulating people to get what he wants like he's essentially sacrificing people to this vampire to get a movie on screen mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want that reaction gif yeah. <laughs> it's so good because like he's shouting at him about what he wants him to do and he just doesn't give a shit yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's so great I think produced by the great Nicolas Cage okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was well he's obsessed with those like old uh, German films he also there is a uh, a movie I haven't seen it I, I was doing some research on other vampire movies but uh, I think Vampire's Kiss is one where Nicolas Cage in his most 90s weird thinks he was bit by a vampire he oh, starts yeah. acting like a vampire and he's like he's like, where's my reflection man and he's like looking in the mirror but he's there <laughs> that's uh, there's it's very silly and uh, an episode of Dark Vampire Tourist Kiss. where he goes to New Orleans to this house where apparently like all these vampi- vampires live uh-huh. and it's pretty interesting it's like human people who drink blood from one another and Ugh. do all these rituals and stuff and David Farrier's just like okay and he's like but you know you're not vampires <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I mean they know they just yeah. pretend to not know mm-hmm. I don't know like, I, mean, I know that I am not Cloud from Final Fantasy 7 but oh. I pretend to not Got know. a question for everyone. Oh, yeah. sorry, oh no, no, go ahead. I, I do have one honorable mention. Me It'll too. blow oh, okay. your mind. Go, go ahead. Uh, a little film called Ultraviolet. Ooh. Oh, Here's okay. The, because halfway through okay. you go, oh, fuck, this movie's about vampires. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Same guy made Equilibrium. Movie's mm-hmm. trash. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I also have a little shout out 
Daybreakers. Oh, actually, <laughs> so I had Daybreakers on my list too, but mm-hmm. only for Willem Dafoe's jeans. Yes. Well, I will say that there is more to the movie. The, it's, it's an a interesting great concept. Great premise. What in the vampires, future everyone's a vampire? In the future, vampires are the norm. Yeah, they're but, the general population. But now, since they're the norm, they're starving, and so they've created this weird night utopia with their super vampire brains and stuff. <laughs> but they're also all starving because there's not any blood left and there's a few human cattle out there. Um, and this one vampire ends up discovering that the only way to survive is to figure out how to become not a vampire. So there's like a bunch of humans that he aligns. Uh, it's just, it's, it's wonky and Willem Dafoe is in it as well who plays this super cool tough guy who drives a muscle car, who <laughs> used to be a vampire but somehow became human again. And he rolls up the bottoms of his jeans to show how tough he is. And I'll never I'll never forget just seeing that and seeing him like whatever, smoking a cigarette, talking ta- on his muscle car, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fine, it's e- schlock. Ethan Hawke is rarely in a bad movie, in my opinion. Uh, Especially, so like he always picks interesting projects, which I just thought was weird. So like this or like The Purge. Why mm-hmm. is Ethan Hawke in The Purge? I don't know. <laughs> but oh yeah, there's a little bring jeans. him over. Um, but much like uh, <laughs> that's what a tough guy does. Yeah, look at his <laughs> look at his jeans there. I say, it. like Colin Farrell <laughs> or uh, what's his name, jo- Joshua Hartnett. I uh, you can call him Josh. I call, okay. him, I call him Joshua. All We're right. cool like that. Uh, I have a, I definitely have a man crush. What is that giant video ad on? Know, the le- they're covering oh. the pants. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the most important part. How There's do they know no X. <laughs> Go away. No, nope. you gotta, you gotta buy that Voodoo AI. <laughs> Go to a copy there. Of, there. Okay, make that like a that. wallpaper. <laughs> That's the toughest guy in the movie, right there. I mean, those pants are like a foot too tall for him. He looks like a scared dog. Anyway, and Ethan Hawke doesn't look like a vampire there. No, because this, this is, is after, after. This must have been after oh, he his reverse oh. transformation. Oh, spoiler! I don't remember the end of this movie because once I it gets into that bullshit, it's not interesting anymore. I was going to yeah. ask everyone: Would you become a vampire if the choice? Of, I would absolutely. Yeah. Well, you love the sun, though. Yeah, you yeah. can't go to the beach. Uh oh. Do you think about this? Or you didn't think about this. You or, already said you said yes, Tom Cruise. Well, I will drink your <laughs> blood. <laughs> yeah, I've done yeah, it. wait. You're gonna be. You talking Daybreakers vampire? You talking Twilight vampire? Daybreakers. Like, okay, because Twilight oh. vampire bullshit. Yeah, that's horseshit. Because they're like, we can go in the sun, but it makes our skin shine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest shit what? in the world. Yeah. It's um, like the writer, the whatever, what's her face, Stephanie Meyer was mm-hmm. like, it's like, oh, but there's a problem with this. Mm-hmm. A vampire wouldn't go to school. Because they die in the sun, and school takes place during the day. Oh wait, I don't care. I'm a shitty author. Yeah, and then she like, rips one and smells her own fart. <laughs> yeah. <goes>. Yes. <laughs> anyway. um, my my little shout out would be to my first experience with a vampire that I remember was the book Banicula. Did you guys? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I own Banicula. Oh, I would have brought it in if I knew. Oh. I have it here. I have Banicula, and then I have Banicula Strikes Again. Yep. There was an old cartoon. I couldn't find any clips on YouTube so of it. There is a trailer for Little Vampire. <laughs> the, can you bring Sorry. up Banicula? Uh, the kid from... <laughs> so, Banicula <laughs> is also yeah. related to, like, the Holiday Inn books. See, they did some shitty cartoon. No, we don't want that. This is what you I need, Yeah, yeah you need that's, that. that's what this I have. Oh, God, I do remember. There's, there's an he amazing sucks, sketch on one of the pages out. where Banicula, they, they're trying to kill Banicula, so the cat lo- reads that you have to drive a stake through the bunny. Oh, my God. So the cat gets, like, a meat stake, lays <laughs> it on top of the bunny, and then there's a great piece of art of the cat with its fist raised mm-hmm. about to, like, <laughs> yeah. drive the stake through the rabbit. But, yeah, yeah I, I would have brought it if I knew. Uh, well... Next time. Next Good shout out, though. Anyway, most oh vampires my. are shit. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think Dracula's broken. I want someone to make a good Dracula movie. How do we fix Dracula? James, pitch me a Dracula. Uh, Dracula is this sexy, hot Eastern European guy. <laughs> when he comes back uh, to life, he's got, for some reason, like a bulletproof vest on or something <laughs> and a lot of chains around his neck, and he wants to go clubbing. I can't believe no one brought up Lost Boys. That was on my. Yeah, we I talked mentioned about it. it. But we, I, I don't know how much. I can't spend all fucking day talking about yeah, vampires. We could talk about vampires forever. I guess. Greasy sax guy. Could, Lost yeah. Boys was like my fucking shit growing up. Also, super eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is wonderful. It's awesome. Now. Remember when he's like, "You're eating maggots," and he's like, "Nah, it's ramen." There's something about <laughs> an eighties vampire that just the hair and the, the leather. Way. That's the, the way. The problem. My we don't have to talk about it, but 
everyone sucks in Lost Boys except for Kiefer Sutherland, yeah. who's awesome. And then all his other vampires yeah. have, I think Alex Winter's in it, and all he does is go, <laughs> yeah. They're like, Did, should we give him a line? They're like, nah. He's, he's in Bill and Ted. He sucks. <laughs> anyway. Right on. So Halloween vampires, there you go. Um, thanks for tuning in this week, guys. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll come up with some other spooky Halloween stuff for next week. What do you mean? Week. Why not Venom? Well, yeah, Venom's we're, we're, we're probably going to do – we should have done Venom this week. You guys went to Canada. We couldn't do Venom. But if, we had, done, if we had no. done Venom this week, then people wouldn't have been able to watch because no one would have gone to see Venom. Venom wasn't out oh. while we were in Canada. I'm just messing with you guys. We'll, we will watch Venom. We can talk about uh, Tom Hardy next I don't think, week. I don't think it needs to be timely. I think we, we watch it. We get some time to think about it. We write our thoughts, hey, you know our prayers. I think we meet here a year from now talk about Venom. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna be Let dead. it settle I've got for a, thing. a bit. Joel Schumacher. Venom 2 will be out by then. Um, Dusk Till Dawn. Another I was going to bring movie. that up, yeah. too. Damn. There's too many good ones. I wouldn't call From Dusk Till Dawn a vampire it movie. Is. Throw that one out there. It Absolutely. becomes one exactly. about Same half an hour thirst. into it. It's a, it's, a, it's a movie in two parts. That's or, why it's so interesting. Well, yeah, that's, maybe that's how you make them interesting. Kate Beckinsale right. looks good in that hot leather, though. In oh. Underworld? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. You want to date Kate Beckinsale? Be in a movie with her. <laughs> <laughs> Direct movie with her. Or, no, she was with Scott Speedman. And then she was with Martin Sheen or Michael no, but Sheen. She, her husband was a director as well. I her know. Old husband. She went through all of them. <laughs> Just be like, like she's going to move on to the extra soon. Uh-oh. You watch. <laughs> you get yours. All right, guys. See you next week for some Venom. Right. Bye. <laughs> it feels like they actually know what they're doing from a visual perspective. They absolutely <laughs> did. And, and yeah. that's kind of what elevates it from a normal, maybe even a crummy horror movie into something that I think is really badass. And that Panos knows what he's doing with those long shots, with the long droning music. It just kind of lures you into this weird universe. There's there's also kind of weird anime.